Hello everyone, so glad that you are able to join us today. We just wanted to gather together and wish you all a happy new year. So on the count of three, one, two, three. Happy, happy new, new year. year. We pray that you had a wonderful Christmas holiday season and you started off the new year in prayer and gathering of friends and family. And we are, we are thankful to God that you are able to join us. Good morning, everybody. So glad that you are able to join with us this morning. As we begin the new year, I want to wish everyone a very happy new year. And before we begin, let's start with the word of prayer. Our gracious Father, we thank you, God, for this day. Thank you, God, for bringing us together. God, as we start the new year, O oh Master, God, we pray that we will be able to open your word, O oh God, with new enlightenment, O oh Master, that, that will renew our spirit and strengthen our spirit, O oh God, so to enable us to draw close to you. Father, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our Lord and our Redeemer. Amen. So today I am so thankful to God that our family is back together. We are all feeling well, well I'm feeling well, and we are all glad to be together. And today's scripture portion is taken from the book of Genesis. Yes, we are starting from the beginning. We are going to be looking in the book of Genesis in chapter four, and we are going to be looking at a few scriptures here and there. And I want to start off with, uh, you know, especially starting the new year. I think it's important that we, uh, that, uh, you know, as they say, start off with the right foot forward. And the, the right foot forward would mean, you know, what is it that we need to do in order to be in the presence of God? What is it that we need to do in order for us to abide in his presence? What is it that we have to do in order to grow in him and draw close to him on a daily basis so that his name will be glorified? And in all that we do, as we continue to decrease, he will continue to increase in and through us. And so where we, I wanted to look at the scriptures from the uh, from chap, Genesis chapter 4. And this is the story of Cain and Abel. And you might wonder that this may not be an appropriate message for the beginning of the year. But I, uh, I beg to differ because I think it's important for us to re recognize some of the things where, of what we do and how we do certain things and why it's important that we do them right. And so we're going to look at the scriptures in Genesis chapter four, and we're going to be looking at, um, we're going to start in verse, the second portion of verse two and pick up a few verses there and come to uh, verse seven. So the second portion of verse two through seven is what we are going to be focusing on. Now, Abel kept flocks and Cain worked the soil. In the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as the offering to the Lord. And Abel also brought an offering, fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. The Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering, but on Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. So Cain was very angry and his face was downcast. Before we go into the next two scriptures, I want us to give us a little bit of history. You know, people always say that we need to be 
um, you know, we come as you are is what the scripture tells us, right? That is, is what people always say when, 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 when we need to approach God. God doesn't want us to um, get our life in order. You know, when you say, some people, when you give them the message of salvation and the information to receive Christ as their personal savior, they say, oh, I know all of that, but I'm just waiting to get my life in order. I want to do everything perfectly before I can come to him. And our response to that has always been, God says, come as you are. God will, God will accept you just the way you are. And then he will work in you to change you to be more like him because we are created in God's image. The word of God tells us that we are created in his image, but because of sin, we have changed. And as we commit our life back to Christ, the God, we have to allow God to work in us so that he can make us look more like him in every aspect of our lives on a daily basis. But he doesn't want us to find perfection before we can approach him or receive him as Lord and Savior. So we always say, come as you are. And in some cases, people also take that as to their advantage. And, you know, many come to church as if they are going to the ballpark. And I personally, well, while it, you know, it may be acceptable for many, but for me, I like to dress up when I go to church because I want to, God has blessed me with good things. And I want to be able to worship God with those good things and allow God uh, and show God that coming to his presence is meaningful to me. Coming to his present presence, I give him reverence and I also give him thanks for the good things that he has provided for me. So if I can dress up to go to a party, then I should make time to dress up to go to church. That's the way I see it. And here in this scripture, we see that both Cain and Abel bring an offering to God, but God receives Abel's offering with favor than he does with Cain. And the, 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 some people think the theologians have tried to tell us that Cain's, where Cain was just used as an example, but I don't think so. I think God is trying to teach us to bring the very best to him first to offer him a portion of our very best back to him. This also refers back to tithing. And God says, you know, give me the, a tenth of your earnings. The, in Malachi, the Bible tells us a tenth of our earning is supposed to be given to God. And that doesn't mean that you spend all your money when you receive your paycheck, and hopefully you have left over a tenth portion of your savings, and then you give that to God. No, no, no. It says that we have to give the very beginning or the very first portion, or, or the tenth of that first portion needs to be set aside as tithing to God. And even here, God says, that, you know, that, that, that that's what... Uh, that, that, that's the favor that God looked upon with Abel's offering. And it, it, the Bible says so. It says, Cain brought some of the fruits of his soil as an offering to the Lord. And Abel also brought an offering. And it specifies fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. Then the scripture shares that the Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering, but on Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. So Cain was very angry and his face was downcast. Then the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? So clearly, this is not a theological understanding that the, the theologians cannot explain this away as just my understanding. But God is telling us here what he expects of us to bring to him as an offering. The first portion, the good portion needs to be given to God cheerfully. And when we give cheerfully, God will bless us abundantly. And so God is asking Cain here, why is your face downcast? If you have done the right thing, if you, why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? 
But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must rule over it. Many times as Christians, we tend to look upon others with envy and jealousy for odd reasons. We look upon others who are blessed with something that you something that you might be desiring or that you might want or covet, which is a sin. And then we become downcast in our lives because we don't have that which that other person has. And God says here, if you do what is right, will you not be accepted? If you do not do what is right, Sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must rule over it. We see in the earlier chapters of Genesis that the sin was the cause of separation between Adam and Eve and God, right? Until then, they walked with God. They talked with God. They communed with God freely. And then when their eyes were opened and they realized that they were naked, they hid from the presence of God. And then God says, how did you know? And the sin that entered into our lives is what separated them from God. And we also see the same thing here. And God is warning us that we need to be careful in how we perceive things and how we understand things. When we seek God, the, in the book of James, it tells us that if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask and it will be given to him. See, our God is a God of wisdom. Our God is a God of giving. Our God is a God of forgiveness. So even when we falter, he will give us, he will forgive us of our sins when we approach him with a contrite heart. And before we fall into sin, in Cain's case, when, when Cain was jealous of his brother and he saw the difference of how God received Cain's offering and Abel's offering, when Cain got jealous of his brother, God saw that and God foreknew where that sin would lead him. And so God approached Cain and he asks him, why are you downcast? Why are you so sad? Why are you upset? If you had done the right thing, would you have not been accepted also? God is giving Cain an opportunity here to mend his ways. And even then, he is also directing him of what the future holds if he is not careful. And here we see in verse 7 that it says, But if you do not do what is right, Sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must overrule it. God gives us the power to overcome sin. When we receive Christ as our personal savior, God, the Holy Spirit that dwells within us, can speak to us and direct us and guide us. That inner voice that we hear, the Holy Spirit attempt to guide us in the right path. When we pay attention to it and we seek God earnestly, God will enable us to overcome that sin and walk in the path of righteousness. And that's what God was trying to tell Cain here. That's what God is trying to tell each and every one of us today, that if we are not careful, sin is crouching at our door. If we are not careful, sin is crouching at our door. We must be careful to seek God earnestly every day of our lives, every morning when we wake up, ask God to guide your footsteps, to lead you in the path that you must go and ask for his presence to remain with you wherever you go so that you can walk according to his will and purpose. At the end of the day, let's remember to give thanks for protecting us and enabling us to do that which God has called us to do that which he wants us to do. If we have faltered sometime during the day, let's remember to seek his forgiveness so that we will not wait for sin to overtake us and, to, and for sin to overrule us, rule over us, if you will. But to allow God to cleanse us and purify us 
so that we can walk in his way and live according to his will and purpose. So my dear friends this morning, this is my desire for you for this new year. Let us commit ourselves in God's hands. Let us submit ourselves completely to him so that his name will be glorified in everything that we do. And most importantly, let us pray and seek God to draw close to him on a daily basis and enable him to use us for his kingdom glory. And when others see us, Christ will be revealed in us. In everything that we do, we must be able to portray the image of Christ because we are created in his image and thereby when others see us, they should be able to see Christ in us. Let's pray. Our gracious Father, we thank you, God, for this day. Thank you, God, for being with us and guiding us, protecting us and watching over us. God, this morning, as we read your word, oh God, enable us, oh Master, to bring our very best to your place, to, to your place of worship. Father God, we pray, oh Master, whether it is ourselves that we bring and we should, and whether it's an offering that we bring and we should, Father, help us to bring our very best portions of everything that you have given to us to give back to you as an offering, O oh God, so that we can worship you and honor you in all the things that you have blessed us with. Help us, Father, to never take things for granted. Teach us, Father, to never take things lightly. When it comes to your word and your commandments that you have given to us, O oh Father, Help us to follow them to the every, every T to be crossed and every I to be dotted, O oh God, so that we are walking in your fullness in everything that we do. Teach us, O oh God, to submit and surrender ourselves completely to you. Enable us, O oh Master, to draw close to you and help us, O oh Father, to abide in you and to remain in you, O oh God, so that when others see us, Christ will be revealed in us. In this new year, O oh God, we thank you for your blessings. We thank you for the opportunities and the doors that you open for us to minister. And Father, we pray, O oh God, that we will continue to worship you and honor you in all that we do. God, we give you praise and we give you honor. Bless each and every one in the sound of my voice, O oh God. And Father, we pray, O oh God, that you will continue to use for your kingdom glory. And Father, we pray, O oh God, that we will be a blessing to others who cross our path this week. Enable us, O oh Master, to continue to live in your will. We give you praise, we give you glory, and we give you honor. In Jesus' mighty, wonderful name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for watching. Hope this message has been a blessing to you, to encourage you to draw closer to God and to do all that God wants us to do. We pray that you will have a blessed week until we meet again. Bye now. Bye everyone. Goodbye.